<laughs> All right, so this is Stephen Chen for Night Hacking Interviews at DevOps, and I'm here with Raul Gabriel Irma. That's right. Hi, okay. sir. How are you? That was, that was rough. Three names. And I got them all right. I'm doing pretty good this interview. Very good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> With the red accent as well, very nice. So um, you're from UK? Um, Belgium, actually. Belgium? Yeah. Okay, and which university? Uh, several. So I did my undergrad at Imperial College in London. And nice. Now I'm okay, doing that's a, the accent then. Yeah, yeah. Um, and now doing a PG at the University of Cambridge. Cool, cool, nice. Um, and you've been doing a lot of stuff with Java 8. So Richard and I were doing an interview earlier. Um, I think we even were chatting about stuff which you're working on. So you guys are doing a talk later today? Yeah, so um, we're doing a talk on functional refactoring in Java 8. So looking at how you can refactor your existing code bases to make use of functional program techniques yeah. uh, to achieve more like flexibility, using the streams changes. API, monads, anything else. So using more uh, the idea of Lambda expressions and method references. So we're uh, focusing okay. on this idea of first class functions. So yeah. a fancy terminology from functional programming, but we want to kind of uh, shed lights on all those buzzwords, you know, all those things that make you sound smart during dinners. <laughs> you know, so we want to shed lights on all of that stuff with uh, real examples. Yeah, so starting sm being smart at dinners is extremely important. <laughs> and um, there's also a really good beer culture here as well in, in Belgium. Yep. So you, yep. can, you can be smart with your um, very, very eclectic beers. That's right, yep. Belgium is a great country for beers. So how do you actually get any work done at the university with all the beer going around here? That's a good question. <laughs> I, I hope my supervisor is not watching this live stream because I shouldn't be here, really. Um, but um, actually, my PhD is on programming language evolution. Yeah. So Java 8 is quite relevant, actually. Um, the massive changes introduced in Java 8 is part of evolving the language. Are there any um, other languages which you are you compare Java against or you're looking into as a part of your thesis? Yeah, I yeah. am. So uh, Python is a great uh, yeah. use case. Um, there's Python 2 and Python 3, which are completely backward incompatible. So the, the code you write in Python 2 will not run in Python 3 in most cases. So like two entirely different Yeah, and it's very, very interesting to compare it to the Java philosophy, mm -hmm. which is about trying hard to keep compatibility across versions. So those are very, very interesting uh, use cases to look at. For my yeah, and I think there's, there's other projects which kind of fall in the middle. Like they'll have incompatible releases, and then they'll keep compatibility for a while. That's right, yeah. Um, but I guess the, it's kind of interesting because you, you see people get on stu stuck on old versions of languages or platforms when yep. there's no um, easy way to upgrade large entrenched systems. And you almost create these. Um, little silos of um, legacy code. Yep, yep, yep. So it's, as you mentioned, it's specifically hard when you've got large projects, right? Yeah. So one of the things I've been uh, looking at is, well, how can we locate um, source code that should be changed on a large scale? So if you've got a project with three million lines of code, one thing you're interested in evolution is also evolving idioms, right? Mm -hmm. So the way we process collection in Java 8 is very, very different to the way we process collection in Java 4, 5, and so on. Yeah. So one thing that is interesting is, well, how can we locate all use of, of plain iterators in our code so we can then modify it to convert them to the streams API, for example. So OK, yeah, some of the ideas do really primitive upgrading of, of patterns, but I think it's mostly like um, you know inner classes to functional interfaces or those yeah. sort of things, but you're looking at kind of like deeper patterns for like usages of iterators or certain APIs where you can actually upgrade those. Is it, is it designed to kind of um, give hints to large projects on where to focus their energy or is it actually like automated tooling which you can just kind yeah. of run and it will give you like a refactored version that's semantically equivalent? So my focus has been on the search part. Yeah. So a way to specify code patterns to look at. And one example of that would be Actually, an incompatibility in Java 7 was how exception are rethrown. That's okay. a very corner case of the language. And how can we specify this as a query uh, to see if our code base is affected by this change or not? So that's something that I've been looking at. Cool. No, that's exciting. Um, oh, and you are also working on your PhD. So are you going to yep. finish that soon? Yeah. Um, so I did a mistake uh, in my PhD, <laughs> which is write a book which is not my thesis. 
Oh. Uh, so I wrote a book about Java 8, so that has taken like a year and a half of my life. Oh uh, yeah, congratulations. And uh, <laughs> now I'm like, well, let's get back to it. So hopefully in about six months, I'll finish. Uh, it's been three years and a half now, so. Yeah, so six months more of pain. Yeah, I mean, it's very enjoyable. I, I, I like it, but I've got some you'll be, you'll be Professor Raul Gabriel. Professor Irma. Professor Irma. <laughs> Make my mum proud. <laughs> nice. Um, and what are, their, what are their sort of plans do you have um, for the rest of the DevOps conference? Anything exciting you're looking forward to? Yeah, so, um, I mean, mainly catching up with all my friends here, which is great. Uh, giving you, a talk. You're a long-time DevOps attendee? So the first time was in 2012. Okay, yeah. Uh, so this is your third year. Third year, yeah, third year. Um, it's great to have a Belgian conference, to be honest. Uh, so that feels good. Otherwise, going back to England uh, this weekend, so not staying for too long. Yeah, yeah, that explains why I mistook you for an Englishman, because your your heavy London accent, your heavy English accent. For for us Americans, yeah. Anybody who sounds a little bit weird, oh, they're British. <laughs> well, I take that as a compliment, to be honest, because I get French all the time, so having a London accent is good. It's good. No, but I can understand you. Yeah, so yeah, you're not yeah. French. Not French, okay. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Cool. All right. Well, it was awesome chatting with you. Thanks Ron. for having me. Yeah, thanks very much. And um, you can watch our next interview upcoming, as I believe we're going to slip in one with... Um, oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm losing it here. My, my agile buddy. But anyway, in another half an hour or so, we will have another interview coming up for your